Hello, uh, this is Ms. Nicholson, and I'm going to be uh, working through the pre-teach notes uh, with you for pre-calculus activity 12 on rational expressions and the reciprocal function. Um, we're going to start here uh, with some vocabulary, which you can see I've already got filled in. So if you want to just pause your video for a moment and copy these down, uh, and then we'll look at some examples together. Okay, before we get into the examples, there's a couple of these vocabulary words that I want to talk about with you. One of the really important features about rational functions, and you'll see this more and more as we start looking at their graphs, is that they have asymptotes, that they have vertical asymptotes, and they have horizontal asymptotes. Sometimes, not always, not every rational function has a vertical asymptote, not every rational function has a horizontal, but those are a key feature that we can expect to see in our rational functions. And so looking at these two definitions, uh, what I really want to highlight for you here is that when we have an asymptote, either vertical or horizontal, something is approaching infinity and something else is approaching a finite number. In the case of a vertical asymptote, it's the actual function value that's approaching positive or negative infinity as our x value is approaching a number. So I'm just going to highlight this as x goes to some number, f of x goes to positive or negative infinity. And I'm just going to highlight that idea. On the horizontal asymptote, in this case, x is what's going to infinity. Notice we're talking about the end behavior as x goes to positive or negative infinity, f of x, the function, is approaching some number. And I'm going to highlight that. It's a really important distinction uh, that we need to make sure we understand the difference between those two asymptotes. So let's look at uh, this first example here. In example one, um, asking us to sketch a graph of uh, this function, 3 minus 2x over x plus 3. I know it's a rational function because I have two algebraic expressions it's, uh, written as a ratio, as a fraction, and we're going to describe the behavior of the function around its vertical and horizontal asymptote. Now we're going to use a calculator to help us do this, and um, I've already typed this in the calculator, although I did not set my window to match. I'm going to go ahead and change uh, my window settings here to match what's on the graph on the notes. There we go. And um, I'll just bump that back to one. Okay, so here's our rational function. You can see it looks looks like the rational parent function. So if we've got a, a shift uh, to the left and maybe down, you can see here it looks like we've got a vertical asymptote uh, at th uh, negative three. And I'll show that grid might help us see that a little bit better. You can see here We've got our vertical asymptote at negative three. So one, two, three. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in uh, using a dotted line, but to represent that vertical asymptote. Then we need to figure out the horizontal asymptote. And um, it's, it's kind of hard to tell on here. It looks like over here, maybe we're approaching negative two as x goes to infinity this graph is going to get closer and closer to a value here but on the left side um, as x goes to negative infinity it's kind of hard to tell what we're approaching because maybe it's uh, like negative four negative three i'm just not really sure so what we're going to do i'm going to go over to a calculator screen and i'm just going to plug in some values uh, for x to see what's happening with the function and remember, I want x to be approaching positive infinity and negative infinity. So let's just try f1 of 100. If I plug in 100, um, then we're getting that fraction. And actually, let's um, change that to a decimal. And I'll use a, a decimal over here so that we get the decimal approximation each time. So uh, if I plug in 100, negative 1.9. I'm going to plug in 1,000 negative 1.99. I'm going to plug in 100,000. Oh, I forgot the decimal. There we go. Negative 1.99991. 
Um, and so you can see as we plug these numbers in, um, here it says negative two. Now we've reached the, the capacity of the calculator here. It's probably not exactly negative two. So close to negative two though, that, this, that that's the value the calculator is giving us. So it certainly looks like as X gets bigger and bigger, approaching positive infinity, our function is approaching negative two. I'm gonna do the same thing going to negative infinity. What if I plug in negative 100, negative 2.09? I'm gonna plug in negative 1,000, negative 100,000. Oh, I forgot my decimal that time. Here we go. Um, whoops, F1 of negative a million. So you can see these numbers also are getting closer and closer to negative two. So um, it looks like on my graph we're counting by threes. So I'm gonna say negative two is about right here. I'm gonna draw in that horizontal asymptote. And when I draw a horizontal asymptote, I don't always draw it all the way across the screen, across the, the grid, because the horizontal asymptote is really just about the end behavior of the function. It's only telling us what those ends of the function out at positive infinity and negative infinity, what they're doing. Here in the middle of the function, um, it's possible for a function to cross the horizontal asymptote, which sometimes really bothers us because we've learned with vertical asymptotes that the function will never cross it. But a horizontal asymptote value can be a value of the function, but it's going to be more in the middle of the graph and not out on the ends. So my horizontal asymptote only for end behavior. And let me go back to my graph. Here's what the graph looks like. So it's gonna go like this. And um, also, like this. <clears throat> Rational functions, again, key feature is that there are asymptotes. And the function itself always wants to get close to the asymptotes. So those asymptotes are kind of going to define for us the behavior of the function. Let's look at the second example. Using a graphing calculator, we're going to determine where this function increases and decreases without bound. Now, this is just using some different language from those vocabulary words. Increases and decreases without bound. This means that the function is approaching infinity or the function is approaching negative infinity. So I'm gonna go back uh, to my calculator and let's type this function in. 5x plus two over 2x minus four. Okay, and here's what our graph looks like. So we're looking for where the function is going to infinity and where it's going to negative infinity. And um, we can see here that that's happening. Remember the function values, those are the y values. That's happening here, we're going to positive infinity. And down here, we're going to negative infinity. And it looks like that's happening around two. Where x is equal to two, that's where the function is going to positive infinity and negative infinity. That's where my vertical asymptote is. So we're going to say, as x approaches two, f of x approaches infinity, and as x approaches two, f of x approaches negative infinity. Now, as we look at that, that seems a little bit confusing because we've, we're saying the same thing here and we haven't distinguished, um, or and we're saying two different things over here. So we're gonna use some a, just a little bit different notation to indicate on which side is the function approaching infinity. Notice over here, as I approach two from the left, that's when the function is going to negative infinity. Again, as I approach two from the left, the function is going to negative infinity. So what I'm going to do is on the two, I'm going to put a little negative sign here. That means I'm approaching two from the left. The function is going to go to negative infinity. On the right side of two, 
that's where the function is going to positive infinity. So on, as I approach to on the right, I'm using a positive sign for the right side, that's when f of x is going to positive infinity. Now, as we work that, I just remembered, I did not describe the behavior on example number one. Let's go back to example number one. Um, and actually, it'll help us out a little bit that we just talked about this on the other example. So for the vertical asymptote, as we approach negative three, which is where our vertical asymptote is, as we come to negative three on the right side, that's where our function is going to positive infinity. So as x approaches three from the right, our function g of x approaches positive infinity. As I approach negative three, I'm sorry, I forgot my negative on the three, as x approaches negative three from the right. As I approach negative three from the left, that's where my function is going to negative infinity. So on the right side of negative three, the graph is going to positive infinity, increasing without bound. And on the left side of negative three, the function is going to negative infinity or decreasing without bound. Now let's talk about the horizontal asymptote. Remember with the horizontal asymptote, x is going to positive or negative infinity and the function is approaching a number because we're talking about the end behavior. As x goes to positive infinity, our function g of x, as we go out here to positive infinity, the function g of x is getting closer and closer to negative two. That's where we determine that horizontal asymptote was. And as x approaches negative infinity, as we go out this way on the x-axis, this end of the function is also approaching negative 2. Okay, sorry, I forgot to finish that first example, but now we've got it. Let's go back to example number 2. So on B, find the equation of the vertical asymptote for f of x equals 5x plus 2 over 2x minus 4, this function that we're looking at. Well, we've already figured out here that we're increasing and decreasing without bound on either side of positive 2. Remember our graph here, asymptotes right around 2. That's where our vertical asymptote is. It is a vertical line, and so that equation is going to be x equals 2. And if you're not sure, remember this is back in your definitions. Vertical asymptote is the line x equals a number. So in this case, x equals 2. Uh, then we want to find the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So uh, let's go back to the calculator page. And um, I'm going to kind of go through the same thing here. If, if I plug in 100... If I plug in a thousand, if I plug in a hundred thousand, if I plug in a million, it certainly looks like I'm getting closer and closer to 2.5. And let's just check in the other direction, approaching negative infinity. I'm plugging in the same kinds of numbers. And the same thing is happening as we approach negative infinity. These numbers are getting closer and closer to 2.5. So the equation of the horizontal asymptote, remember this is a horizontal line, is going to be y equals 2.5. Now one thing you should consider looking at your equations, I mean what's well, the same function for both of those, how could I look at this function instead of at the graph on my calculator and figure out where that vertical asymptote is? And secondly, how could I look at this function and not the calculator and figure out where this horizontal asymptote is? And we'll talk more about that in the next video.